Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this episode, we bring you along on a tricky bald-faced hornet nest removal that was a challenging one due to the very high location of the nest at almost 30 feet off the ground. The nest was attached to the tall peak of a roof line on a private residence, and there was a deeply recessed landscaping area right in front of the nest, which made ladder work challenging. So we adapted a pole pruner to be used as part of a vacuum extraction rig and we were able to collect a lot of the attacking wasps safely from the ground to be used for venom immunotherapy, or BIT. Then it was time to climb a very tall ladder. This can be dangerous, so we always prepare with a special backpack rig that we use that has the entire vacuum system and a front-mounted trigger to operate it. We bring up bungee-corded equipment that can't fall or get in the way, and we bring bags up there to remove the paper. We have all this gear attached to the body, and as we go up the ladder, we're safe, we're secure, there's nothing loose or hanging that can cause a problem. Once we're at the top of the ladder, we're face to face with the nest. We collect as many more live specimens as we can into the collection bottle, and then we remove the nest itself. We take the brood comb and we put it into the container that we carried up with us, and the bottles with live wasps are then frozen for venom immunotherapy. We take the brood comb back to our lab, and from there we put it into a special habitat where we can incubate all the pupating wasps until they're ready to be collected for venom immunotherapy later. We feed the wasps with honey and water, and this allows them to pupate out at their own pace. Most of the nests we collect in the wild are ultimately incubated when we get them back to the barn. And as you see here, the wasps are very adaptable. They can live inside these incubation habitats for extended periods of time. So we typically will collect them every few days as more and more pupate out. We'll show you the whole process from how we removed this nest in the field, how we brought it back and incubated it, and we were able to collect more wasps for venom immunotherapy that way. We'll show you how we flash freeze the wasps in dry ice to preserve their venom for biomedical use. And we'll show you how we prepare them for long-term storage by dating the bag, marking the species of the wasp inside it, and what they look like when they're frozen and ready to be stored. It's a unique process you don't see every day. We hope you find it interesting. Thanks for riding along with us today. Enjoy the show. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment to let us know you're there. August 3rd, 2024. Today we're working on a pretty large bald-faced hornet nest. That's Delico Vespula maculata. Very beneficial aerial yellow jacket here in upstate Indiana. But it's in a place it needs to go. It's near some windows on this home. So we need to send this to a new location. We'll probably collect it for venom immunotherapy and take the brood comb and incubate it. To collect that later for venom immunotherapy as well. Today we're going to use a unique rig. Uh, we're going to use the Tony Andrick BVAC like usual, but we're rigging it to a very long pole pruner, which is a hollow tube. And our collection container is connected to the very end of that. That's because it's in a relatively inaccessible place down here. This pole should reach it and allow us to stay off ladders as much as possible. And then when we need to remove the nest after we collect, we'll use a ladder. Here you see some close-up imagery of the nest before we disturb it. We always try to get some imagery of a nest prior to the removal so we can see how it looks in the wild before it's disturbed by the collection and removal. And we do this with a pole camera. We just put the camera on top of a long pole and put the pole up to it. Here we begin the removal, and it was a very tricky, very unstable ground that had several levels of step-down rock walls that were all very loose rock. And it was pretty difficult to find good footing and good stability here. So this is why we wanted to use a pole collection device prior to putting up ladders. The more we can work from the ground, the safer the job is. That's the bottom line. We use ladders the least possible amount of time. The footage is taken from a distance here, but you can still see there was an explosion of bald-faced hornets coming out of that nest as soon as we started to tap it with the collection device. So we would continually tap it 
cause the swarm to come out and attack and that allows us to collect them when they come out. So from the lowest level of the step down ground arrangement in front of the home, this nest was almost 30 feet off the ground. It was quite tall. And so the pole pruner pole that we used, we just took the pruner device off the top and replaced it with our collection bottle. And the tube itself worked pretty well, but it was very hard to manage. It was very heavy at that long distance, but at least it did work. It was able to collect a lot of the foragers and attackers that initially came out. From the ground, you can't actually see what you're collecting, so you just have to kind of hope that your gear is rigged properly and then see it when it comes down. Here we just speed this up eight times fast forward, but you can see the cloud begins to reduce as more and more get collected into the device. After just a few minutes here, most of the attackers had been collected, so we knew it was time to begin to rig the ladder and pull the pole out and prepare to remove the entire nest physically. So here's the first part of the collection. We're gonna do this in stages. Good number of workers in here. These were the first attackers. So we got the initial collection with the pole. Now we have extended the ladder and we're gonna go up and do the detail work. Ladder work always dangerous, so we're trying to get really good footing down here. Stability against the rock wall. You always need a decent angle on a ladder so you don't fall. And it helps to have it braced against something solid. What I got up today is a trigger in the front connected to the BVAC in the box. The backpack is on. I'm also taking up with a bungee cord an extra container. This will be to contain the brood comb. And then we have a bag to put the paper in. So that's the plan for today. We're going all the way up this ladder, about 30 feet. Here we go. So at this point it looked like we had most of the collection in the container so it was time to try to remove the nest paper and comb. We don't have footage of that but we'll show you how it looked when we got it down. All right so we have the bald-faced hornet nest contained with some of the workers and maybe the queen. We might have sucked up the queen also. We got some pretty big girls in that collection. But it's a very active nest, very big number of pupating wasps, lots of larvae, lots of eggs. It'll be very nice to have this to incubate for venom immunotherapy. You can see the largest comb on the end, that's all new queens. 
that were born in those big cells. Queens and males, these are the reproductives being born for the next season. They'll hibernate over winter and they'll start their own nest in the spring. This bag is just filled with all the paper envelope that was outside the nest. Our two collection containers have lots and lots of bald face hornet female workers. These are the attackers and the foragers, the guards, the brood comb, maintenance staff, all of those roles are here. I'm gonna take a break and then we're gonna go up and clean. As you can see, the nest is removed, but there's a bunch of paper debris and whatnot. We're gonna go scrub that off to get rid of the pheromone. Just to keep them from coming back, it'll deter them a bit. If we spray some non-toxic oil and soap and water up there. So, super important to have your water, some kind of rag to wipe your face, keep the sweat out of your eyes. Safety goggles, because these things love to spit venom in your eyes and your face. And of course, gloves all the time. Any one of these things that you don't have can cause a real issue up there with visibility, safety, any of that. Finally, we use hearing protection because when we have the backpack vac on especially, it's very loud and you do not want that noise in your ears all the time every day. So protect your ears whenever you're working with vacuum extraction devices to do any type of wasp or bee removal and you'll end up with a whole lot less tinnitus later in life. Cleaned up as much as we could. Couldn't quite get everything while hanging on for dear life on the ladder, but we got most of it. So they'll see a couple of foragers hanging around there for a day or two, and then they'll dissipate and there'll be no more building there. The wasps don't rebuild unless there's a brood comb and a queen. So we got a couple of containers full of workers today. And we've got the entire nest and the paper to go with it. So we can relocate this one or raise it in captivity to incubate it until we can collect it again for venom immunotherapy. So we just took this bald-faced hornet nest off of the residence at about 28, 30 feet tall. Now we're gonna put it into this habitat so we can incubate it. See how the wasps just stayed on it. They did not attempt to come out and attack. They're just hanging out on it. And that is because they are not sensing an attack anymore. And the pheromone is no longer causing them to react that way. And some of these are just brand newly born wasps. They were actually born in this bin on the way back to this property from the client's residence. So this is the only world they know. So we'll let this pupate out inside this captive environment. So here we've got the wasps set up in a habitat with honey and water. This is just a jar full of water with a cloth put into it, paper towel which gets saturated with water. That way they can get moisture without drowning. And you'll see them in there, just kind of relaxing between the layers of comb. Any one of them could be the queen if she's very large like that one. The smaller workers look like that. And there's a number of them hanging out in the nest. They're a little bit overheated right now. 
ride in the truck. But hopefully they can cool down and survive. But as you see here, there's quite a few of them in there. And there's more being born all the time. Down at the bottom, you can see the queen cells. Most of the larvae we're not going to be able to save in this environment. But the pupa, there'll be a lot of those being born and we'll be able to collect those for venom immunotherapy. So here we have some frozen bulb face. We just put them in the dry ice. We're gonna take them out now and mark them for venom immunotherapy. So here we have some frozen Delico Vespula maculata. That's bald-faced hornets, aerial yellow jackets. Good collection for venom immunotherapy. So we're gonna let them understand that this honey is food. Put a little bit on here and see if they'll respond. Sometimes they get it and they'll eat. This one seems to understand that the food is there. So we're giving her a little honey treat just to let her understand that the food is there. And then we can take her down with this stick into the honey Hopefully she'll figure that out. We'll just leave it nearby. That way we'll leave a little bridge to the honey dish. Maybe she'll figure it out. So we're just covering the stick with honey. That way it'll be a little stairwell down to where the food is and they'll figure that out later. August 4th, 2024. As you can see here, they're now feeding on the honey walking down the little bridge we made them with a stick, getting acclimated to their space. Looks pretty busy in there. So as with all of our nests that we collect in the field, this nest was very productive in incubation. We were able to collect on this same set of combs several times over. Every few days, there was many more coming out of pupation that we could collect for venom immunotherapy. That's it for today's episode. Thanks for riding along with us. As always, please like, share, subscribe, and comment to let us know you're there. Have a good one.